Cylinders. <coughs> they kind of like the original bend, just in the pot. All right, so pretty straightforward, normal vendors, right? You've got the base attaches to uh, the blade that spins, right? What about stirring or mixing once it's engaged? But also take that from slow. Sometimes it's good to start from slow and, and just work your speed up so it doesn't yeah. end up on the ceiling. Right. And just open it up in between and kind of mess with it and push it down with a spoon. Okay. Or just so take it, it, it off, turn it off, and turn yeah. it off. Okay. What if you wanted to do it while it's moving? Isn't yeah, there like on the lid? There's a little scraper attached to it to get the sides. What's that on that one? No, I don't know when there's. Some blenders come with a stick. Right, you've got a little plunger that you can stick down in there, right? The funniest thing I've seen is somebody put a wooden spoon in one of those while it was going. Um, the spoon cracked and shredded into the um, mix, and then it shot and hit the ceiling, and she ended up with a bunch of gray on her face. Oh, it was funny. She put it on Facebook, too, which is really funny. Um, so, be very, very careful right, when you're working that thing. Uh, the juicer. Do I get a chance to work with the juicers? Yeah, that's not a super common thing, but essentially um, it's just got a feeder, right? So you turn it on, you feed things through, make sure they're appropriately sized, and it will shred them on the inside and basically pushes all the pulp to one side, and all the juice will just come out and then you'll catch it in a little cup. Um, cleaning that's a big thing as well, just because you know, we do things like carrots or butternut squash in there and it takes on that orange color if you don't clean it very, very quickly. So some of your other juices can end up tinted with that color. Uh, our induction burners, so those are electric. How do we get those things to work? It's made of steel or iron in the pot that we're using. Right, so you can't just plug it in and turn it on and it gets hot. You know, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, like the temperature. But you got a temperature gauge, but it won't work. Right. You can't just turn it on and get it hot. You have to have an appropriate pan on there because it will read the pan. If it likes the pan, then it will get hot. So um, a lot of times people will struggle with that. They'll turn it on and they, they can't figure out why it's not working. <laughs> you got to put a pan on it, right? Um, those things heat up very, very quickly, right? I've seen water come to a boil in those extremely quickly. So, um, make good use of those. What type of metal do those pans have to be? It's got to be like a cast iron or um, certain types of steel. Stainless steel. Yeah. It won't do it. It has to have iron in it because it's basically a magnet. And it right. just basically mm -hmm. flips the magnet two directions and the friction causes things to heat up. Right. You can't use aluminum on it. So, if you have an aluminum pot, it'll never heat up. Exactly. Don't so catch all that. So, it works on a magnet. Um, the extension cord, pretty straightforward, right? It plugs into one side, gives you extra space on your cords. <clears throat> um, the RoboCoup, this is another extremely popular item that has a lot of safety features attached to it. So what are some of the safety features on this, on the RoboCoup? The lid locks in. You have to lock it into place, right? So there's a, um, what does that do? Like why do you have to do it? Aside from the safety issue, but functionally speaking. It engages the light. Engages the blade, okay. Then what? So you got the bowl in place, you got the blade in there. What's next? The Once lid. you get all the product in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The lid. Yeah. The lid, right? Typically those lids either have a magnet or curved edge um, that goes to six o'clock. So that when that clicks into place, it will engage the entire mechanism. And it tells the machine, the base, okay, this product's here, it's ready to go, we can start working. And then at that point, push the button to start it, and it will engage. Um, that blade spins pretty quickly in there. Again, it's got a hole in the top, so the temptation is to stick stuff in there to stir it, but same thing, you want to avoid just getting stuff broken in there. Um, the scales. So we've got two different kinds of scales that you might have been able to, um, three different kinds of scales that you might have been able to work with. Um, if you brought a digital scale from home, you know, on your own, um, those things just have a, a digital layout uh, with readings, lots of opportunity to adjust between ounces and pounds and grams and, and kilograms and things like that. Um, 
and we have our balance scales. So y'all get to work with the balance scales and in your pastry glasses. Can tell me about those. One's pounds, one's ounces. Standardized weights, which are standardized. No, no, the balance scale. Balance. Oh, so you have to be balance side. Out to the right, so you put. The weight at the one side and the right. items. So if you want two and a half pounds of flour, you put two and a half pounds on one side, and then you put your product in the bowl on the other side until it balances. Once it balances, you know you've got two and a half pounds, right? Um, and then the. the the spring scales, the one that you probably use the most of. Tell me about those. How do you move them? Yeah, you pick them up by the bottom. Right? You pick them up by the part of the top. You can stretch and break that that spring. Um, most of them either have a knob, or you can turn the face so that if you want to tear it out, right? Put a pan on there, make that zero. You can either turn the face, or there's a little knob that will turn the uh, turn the uh, what's it called? Mm -hmm. little stick on the inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can balance it out to zero, and then put your product in. Um, the can opener. Where's the can opener? It's on, the front front table. Table. on that front table by you. It'll know, work that thing. Lift up the handle, then pick it up. That's the big way to go. Hit it down, right? The handle goes down and then you spin it. What's the last step that nobody ever does? <laughs> Clean the blade, right? Yes. And some funky things on that blade. Yep. Uh, and then the last one on our smallware is the meat grinder. Garbage Jane's up there grinding away right now. So tell me about that. Where is it stored? Parts in the freezer. Right. Why do we keep all those parts in the freezer? Oh, it's hard to cry when it's cold. Yeah. You want to keep the fat. You want to keep the fat solid, right? Um, as it's grinding, it's going to be a lot of friction that will start to heat up, specifically the fat. Um, so if everything's cold, it will help to keep that down so that, as, as he was saying, it'll stay emulsified properly. Right, we want the meat and the fat to emulsify. Uh, all right, so just going through our chemicals, um, the hand sinks, right? Everybody knows how to um, wash properly, 20 seconds, scrubbing with warm water, make sure you get good soap. Um, and then you know, just keep everything neat and tidy. Right? You should do that a whole bunch of times throughout your day. Um, the vegetable sinks. So what are we looking for in a good vegetable sink? Veggie. Huh? Oh, no. No. Plenty of space, right? You want to be able to rinse the vegetables. Um, if you have one of those produce sanitation um, solutions, um, that's good as well. A lot of times a sprayer on those works out very nicely if you have one. Uh, but basically just somewhere that's segregated from everything else, right? It's not the middle of your dish sink, for instance. Uh, it's not somewhere that raw meat gets a lot, right? If you have something a little segregated where you can safely wash vegetables, um, that's a good thing. Um, for the dishwasher, uh, again, make sure that the, um, the drain is engaged. When you turn it on, it'll fill up, and then the, the, the <coughs> dishes just won't wash through. I remember that it's not a catch-all. Sometimes you do have to rinse things out. Sometimes you have to scrape out some things before it goes through. Uh, but what's one of the most important things that a, a, a health inspector will look for with a, a commercial dishwasher? Yeah, make sure the photos are clean. Uh, well, no, clean is easy. <laughs> That's clean. Ultimately clean. I know we had a problem with our dishwasher one time. Uh, it's, it's brand new, but because we're a new restaurant, but we have a little belt, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a little band that goes around the belt that lets it pull yep. with a little crank, and that was broken, so we won't crank. The health inspector doesn't care about that. Doesn't care about that. I mean, <laughs> it's working it right. It's 
Right, so depending on the dishwasher, you want to make sure that it's sanitizing properly. Um, some dishwashers will use 180, 185 degree water to sanitize. Some will use a chemical sanitizer. In either case, um, the health inspector will put some sort of tester through and it'll check to see if it gets the right sanitizer solution or if it gets the right temperature. Um, so they'll run like a plate through with one of those things stuck to it. So you want to make sure that the dishwasher is sanitizing properly. That's going to be the biggest thing. Uh, so the solid power detergent, that's just our cleaning soap that we add to the um, dish machine. Uh, it goes in the front of the machine, right, it's just one of those cakes, basically. Uh, and we also have a rinse additive that helps to more efficiently rinse away all the soap. Right, so if we're using dish detergent and a rinse additive, what does that imply about how the machine sanitizes? With water, with heat. With heat, right. There's no sanitizer going into this machine, so it's going to be a heat, hot water sanitizer. Um, so for our three sink compartments, we've got two things. Our detergent, um, that's the pink stuff, goes in the front. Right, how should that feel when you touch it? Soapy, not greasy. Soapy, not greasy, okay. Warm. Warm, but not hot, right? You don't want it to be super hot or it will deteriorate the soap. You don't want it to be cold, otherwise you won't get soapiness. Uh, and then the, um, the sanitizer, the Oasis 146, how should that feel? Cold. That's going to be cold water, right? Anything that's warm or hot, again, it will break down that sanitizer too quickly. So how do we operate a three-compartment sink? Yeah. <coughs> Wash, rinse, sanitize, air dry for power line it takes. Sometimes aren't you supposed to like scrape off all the things in a separate sink and then do it? Scrape it at a time, sure. So it doesn't like get the first sink too dirty? Right. Yes, absolutely. All right, almost there. Our simple clean greener. Sim so easy for me to say. Simple green cleaner. Um, what are we using that for? Yeah, everyday work areas, food contact surfaces. Uh, it's a food safe sanitizer. You could sort of drink it, you wouldn't want to, but you can ingest it without any problems. Uh, all right, then our last two, our MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheets. Where are those things located? The wall by that double door. Right, so the wall is you're going into the dish room, right? Um, what's it there for? It's a reference for chemical toxicity, for basically what's in it, for hazardous, how to handle it. should be, should be sanitized on. Yeah. It's there in case you get something in your eyes or you're drinking. Right? If there's an emergency, everybody knows where it is, they can run to it and say, okay, you have the one eight the one forty six. You drank some of it, this is gonna tell us what to do in the case of a problem. Right? Hopefully you never have to touch an MSDS. You have to use it or touch it because something went wrong. Right? But it's there as a reference for dealing with the problem. Um, same with the first aid kit. Where's that thing located? Okay. Yeah, right inside the door, dry storage. Um, all your normal stuff, you know, burn gel, band-aids, grass, gums, that sort of thing. Um, okay, good. Lots of feedback from everybody. So uh, go ahead and sign the bottom, make sure you get the date, and then uh, just have Chef Sykes sign that. And then you're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'd like to take care of that.